YouTube. It's trying something different today. I usually stream on Twitch, but today I am streaming on YouTube. Um, other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Okay, so what I'm doing today is I've got a whole bunch of these silicon molds that I created for the interior of the spaceship I'm currently working on for Jack Houston. Um, these all represent weird little bits and pieces that will be used to kind of detail and, and create the environment of the interior of the ship. So here are a few of them that have been cast, various different weird shapes that kind of somewhat fit together. oil drums um, these are actually difficult to see because they are a clear resin there's one this is the uh, the original the original is not clear so you can kind of see the detail a little bit better um, although there's a lot of putty in there that kind of still makes it look pretty strange but uh, but anyway these are our oil drums that I created um, these are actually just PVC pipes that have detailing kind of added to make them look all oil drummy and uh, created a uh, silicone mold for that and now I'm able to cast these um, now some of them came out better than others this was a pretty solid one um, this one actually was uh, not as solid and broke right here, so I had to reinforce it with some um, polystyrene to kind of get it patched up and to get the pieces glued back in. Um, and there's a couple that are pretty bad. Uh, here's one that I noticed it was starting to, it had such a weak area, I ended up denting it kind of on purpose. I just I wanted to have a dented barrel there. And then uh, this one, let's see. Uh, okay, it's actually this one again. Um, the top is completely crazy. Uh, like it's 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 coming apart there. Um, that's okay because some of these drums should look sort of old and rusty. Uh, so I'm good. This is actually I'm going to paint this sort of a rusty color and make it look um, kind of old and dilapidated and falling apart. And been hauling whatever is in these across the galaxy for far too long and it's all rusty now. Um, these shapes are all just various different weird shapes. Again, it's really going to be difficult to see any of the detail until some paint gets on there, but um, they've all been created using various pipe fittings and things. To kind of create what look like um, uh, what would look like uh, cylinders that you know store some kind of liquid or gas, and then those cylinders are then kind of stacked. Some of them have little bits of model model bits that were sort of added to give them uh, some some detail. Um, yeah, there it goes, and. Some of these will be sort of fitted together. Here's a couple of them stacked, kind of coming down from the ceiling. Um, and here's one I kind of put a, this is actually just like a rubber uh, end that would go on a, I don't know, chair leg or something to kind of give it a nice smooth cap. And here's a couple that were put together using, um, a little piece of uh, this uh, corrugated or, or springed, I guess, uh, hose. And that was pretty cool. Um, so that's another, you know, detailed bit that that will be cast and used. Um, then we have these boxes that started off like this. Uh, they're, they're just supposed to be your basic crates 
sci-fi crates, although I didn't want to get too crazy sci-fi with them. Uh, it's one of the things I want to do with this game, one of the things that I really think makes it what it is, is um, that it, it shouldn't look like a lot of overly designed sci-fi stuff. You know, um, everything kind of looks like some sort of designer's carried away idea of what stuff look like in Aliens now. <laughs> and I say it that way because I don't think that they actually look... Things in games these days actually don't look that much like what things look like in Aliens, but I think that it's what people think that things look like in Aliens. It's very, um, very strange state of affairs in sci-fi design. Um, here are some... some castings. These are very, very thin castings. As you can see, that's why some of these look the way they do. They have, they're very, very thin castings, but then, uh, you know, some in some cases it kind of piled up on one side, so you have the more opaque. And then you have some that are just, like, completely clear. These are very, very thin castings. It saves a whole lot of material. It means that I can cast tons of these things and barely use any you know liquid plastic material um, I'm using smooth on products this is smooth cast uh, this is 325 and when I finish this stuff up I'm gonna probably open up uh, and check out the smooth cast 300 which um, is white for one thing instead of clear so I kind of like that um, Anyway, got to finish that stuff up first. And then to make the molds, uh, I'm using Umu. Again, Smooth On products. Uh, the only real reason, I'm, I mean, the, sp the specific reason I'm using these products is that I'm in Houston, and it is very difficult to get anything in Houston. If I were in Dallas, I'd go down to, to Reynolds Advanced Materials. Um, we had one here in Houston, and it has been shut down for years now, unfortunately. Um, I owe a lot to, to them and to the guy who ran it, Glenn, Glenn Hansen. Uh, that guy knew his stuff, and he taught me a lot, and he taught, more importantly at the time, uh, my friend Mike Oliver, who's doing all the special effects on our movies, uh, taught him a ton about casting and molding and, and all that. This guy was a master mold maker. Uh, but anyway, they're gone now, so if I want to go get products from... Smooth on uh, products or, or anything that uh, they carry over at Reynolds Advanced Material. Now I have to order online or I have to go to Dallas. And uh, in most cases, when I needed this stuff, I just needed it like right away. So um, I just went down to Texas Art Supply and got what they had. Uh, luckily, they have some pretty commonly used products. Umu is a really popular rubber and very easy to use. It's you know, um, one to one ratio by volume. Um, although I do kind of like do using by weight, but that's fine. Um, by volume works too. Same with uh, the the smooth cast. It's one to one by volume, so it's very easy to measure out your stuff. Um, so that's nice. Umu also uh, doesn't really get bubbles. I mean, you just don't really have to worry too much about bubbles when it comes to the Umu silicone. Um, you know, the bubbles will rise to the surface. The viscosity lets all the bubbles kind of come right up. So I've never had a bubble actually appear in one of these. Um, I'm sure it can happen. It just hasn't happened to me. And I've, I've run quite a few of these. Um, the smooth on... Uh, I'm sorry, the smooth cast, on the other hand, is prone to tiny little micro bubbles. Um, and it sets up so fast that you don't really have time to get rid of them. So if you're going to try to do something clear, because you need transparency, I don't know if this is the best for you. There are resins that take, you know, an hour to dry and stay very liquidy until then, so you can really get all the bubbles out. Uh, but in my case, I don't care what it looks like, because I, I, it could be full of bubbles, and this one uh, is, in fact. This is white, not because the silicone is white. Silicone is, I mean, the uh, plastic is white. The, the plastic is clear. This is white because it's full of micro bubbles, <laughs> but it's not on the surface. The surface is perfectly smooth, so um, that's fine. You know, all those micro micro bubbles in there are not going to hurt me. I'm just going to paint this anyway. Um, so again, it, you know, it's all in what you're going to do with it. Um, what else do we have here? We have some weird little things that are just too intricate to even bother trying to mold and cast. Uh, this is actually a 
a fold down sink um, that will be painted a metallic color very soon. Uh, and it just sits on the wall and then folds down so that it can be used as a sink. This is modeled after actual uh, fold down sinks exactly like this uh, that I found on um, a submarine and took a whole bunch of photos and got a pretty nifty little replica made using styrene and the bottom of one of these, um, you know, quarter machine egg thingies. These are annoying to work with. I think this is some kind of probably propylene or something similar. Very difficult to get anything to stick to this. Uh, honestly, this is sitting in a bed of glue and just sort of fitted into place. It's not really stuck in there. If I were to try very hard, I could I could pop it. If I were to try, I could pop this out without too much difficulty. There is actually a layer of glue that I put in here on top of CA, just to kind of help hold it in place. Um, it'll work. You know, I wouldn't use it for gaming. You know, if this were like Warhammer or something, that wouldn't be good. Uh, I wouldn't use that. I would probably try to take that entire little fold down piece and maybe cast it to make a complete, you know, unified piece. And then here's a metal shelf. Just a basic metal shelf. Um, it's gonna have a little more detailing, rusting and stuff, but this stuff is just uh, to kind of give, give things detail, give the rooms some character. Um, this is, again, unpainted. I started to try to make a mold of this. Uh, the material that I had actually went bad a lot faster than it was supposed to. Um, which I've been told was an issue to do with labeling, because they didn't label uh, the dates at the store at uh, Texas Art Supply. But they were aware of the issue and they were that it wasn't going to happen again, basically, is what I was told. Um, anyway, that happens. Uh, your materials go bad sometimes a little faster than you expect. And I noticed though that I was using so much that I, when I bought more, I didn't want to try it again because I was just this thing took so much material, even a very thin mold of it, and a, a too thin, you really would need a mother mold. It, it's just, it's a pain. So um, I'm just gonna have one of these. <laughs> it's fine. I don't need more than one. One is fine. No problem. Um, So yeah, there's a little bit of detail in there and the little hatch and latches uh, that open it up. And um, that'll be kind of kind of cool. Let's see. Oh, we have beds. Well, we have a bed. Again, this is just too complicated for me to try to, to I'm, I'm not gonna bother trying to mold this. Um, I could, I, I really would prefer to do it with clay and, and have like a two part mold, but uh, that would take forever, and I don't think that I need two or more than one. I think I can get away with just moving this around and photographing it in the same spot over and over. I don't think it's too big a deal. And then there's um, this is the the top part, the bed. So these again, I found I actually found these in the uh, submarine, and they kind of fold up and fold down, uh, and it's actually made of sprue. That's just a sprue from models, model kits, and uh, a little bit of thin polystyrene. I'm not sure what the thickness of that polystyrene is. I have two different thicknesses that I work with. One is very, very thin. Um, sheet, and I, I actually got a huge roll of this. I mean, it is like I don't know, maybe four or five feet tall. I think it's about four feet tall and uh, big roll. <laughs> so, I mean, I have just like an unlimited amount of this stuff. This is great. Um, for thicker things, for walls, I use this 080. And this is much thicker, much, much thicker. So it's really good for solid flat walls that you don't want bending. And I just have a, you know, sort of a box of sheets of that. That will not last forever, but uh, they'll probably get me through everything I need to do for this game, I would assume. So uh, I need to make more of these, these boxes, and 
while I'm at it, I'll probably make some more of the other pieces. So, it's about time to get casting. I am kind of a stickler for a place for every tool and every tool in its place kind of thing. I have hangers with the, all the tools go on. As you can see, this actually looks like a really messy uh, environment because I've been pouring plastic all over it for the last couple of days. Um, but, well, as messy as things get, even when you're trying, <laughs> if I if I weren't trying, things would get insane. So that's why you really I I, I really advocate a clean workspace. Okay, so this is uh, paper. I do always like to paper my table before I work on it. It's something I had instilled in me from watching Stan Winston videos, actually. Um, they, uh, they really, really... Stan Winston himself was a stickler for a cleanly working environment. And it turns out that, you know, you can get these sheets really cheap. You can get them really cheap at the hardware store, but I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> this roll, which actually has had quite a bit removed off of it, so and it's still pretty thick, it's going to last me quite a long time. It was a dollar. These, they, they have this at the Dollar Tree. You can get rolls of, pap of table paper at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. <laughs> So I had I bought like two of these, and then later I think I might have bought another one or two, and uh, you know I still have this one. It's it's uh, amazing how far these things go, though. And when you just you know again masking tape, same thing. It's very easy to go plunk down you know five dollars or, or or four dollars for a roll of tape at the hardware store. This masking tape which has plenty of masking tape on it, and it's actually, this has been used quite a bit already. Um, I'd say it's probably gone down by about 20%, and um, it was Dollar, dollar Tree. So, <laughs> my recommendation is when you need tools, when you need supplies, first try Dollar Tree or another dollar store like that, which is truly a dollar. At Like, Dollar Tree is one of these few places where it really is a dollar. There's no like, you know, dollar store and everything's six dollars, eight dollars. They don't do that at Dollar Tree. Everything actually is a dollar. The only exceptions are like some of the candy bars are 80 cents. Other than that, everything is actually a dollar. So, in other words, it's going to be a dollar or less. But uh, pretty much everything there is a dollar. They, they don't even have prices on things. So, um,. I recommend going there first and then uh, for more you know hardware tool type stuff um, also check out Harbor Freight see what they've got and if you can't find what you need at Harbor Freight and you can't find it at Dollar Tree then go to the hardware store there are gonna be some things trust me that you are going to want to spend extra money on and get really really nice ones at the at the hardware store that's that's definitely a thing um, nothing wrong with that whatsoever but um, the rest of it there's just no point so like snap blades snap blades are not not cheap at uh, at the hardware store this giant, like, this is one of the big thick snap blades, and these are really awesome, by the way. Not because they snap off, that's okay, but <laughs> what's exciting about these is that, look how long that is. You can get a snap blade and slice through very thick material with one knife in one nice, smooth motion. And you can get a, one of these snap blades for just a couple of bucks. I mean, these are stupid cheap at Harbor Freight. Um, and then you can get a pack of these blades also very very cheap at Harbor Freight so you can walk out for you know under ten dollars probably and get you know this one I have a, a small size one uh, this is actually a DeWalt that's the funny thing it's very difficult to even tell the difference between these this is a DeWalt which I spent more on because I didn't realize they had these at Harbor Freight in in such nice 
you know, form. I knew they had little plastic ones up front, but it turns out they actually have some just like this in this size, both of these sizes, uh, that look just like the DeWalt brand and they're, you know, a fraction of the price. Um, it may be that the DeWalt might be a little bit more sturdy, but I wouldn't say it's really all that sturdy to begin with, so I doubt it. I think that you're wasting your money if you probably get anything other than, you know, the cheaper ones at Harbor Freight in that case. Um, here's a good example of something I would spend extra money on. <laughs> this is a wonderful blade. Um, I found this at Texas Art Supply. You can find this at probably any good art supply store. And it has rubber grips down here. You know, you use this end to twist, to remove the blade, you know, and, and then twist it back, and there you go. And the thing is, this is going to save your hands, <laughs> and it's going to give you so much precision uh, that you're, you're just going to use this over and over. This is going to be a tool that is going to be in your hand constantly. And for that, I, I don't care how much it is. This thing cost me like $8. I would have paid 20 for it. I mean, I don't care because I'm going to use this so much. I would pay, you know, anything for it. It really the, the cost is no object when something is going to be in your hands just constantly, you know. Um, you because you you know when you think about the percentage of the time that you're going to be using a blade, if you're doing sty remodeling, um, for anyone of course there's going to be tools that will be, you know, more important than others. But whatever the tool is, if it's something that you're going to have in your hands more often than not, um, you know, pop for the really nice one. But if the, uh, you know, if Harbor Freight or whoever, you know, has the a cheap knockoff and it looks just as good, you know, hey, there you go. Um, I will say that I have learned some lessons trying to go for the absolute cheapest thing first, even if my gut was telling me it was probably not going to work out. And then I end up spending even more money. That's that's not that's not fun. Um, case in point, fire. You know, first, you know, I'm trying these, and they're really obnoxious and annoying to use. It's difficult to melt anything with it because the flame just sits there. Um, especially if I'm sculpting and I'm trying to melt the clay with sculpting um, and then you've got you know one of these which turns out to be a huge pain in the ass to use also and the butane shoots out of here and puts out the fire uh, more often than not <laughs> so it is actually very annoying to use and difficult and so you know rather than getting any of that stuff I should have just gotten the uh, a torch which I do have now it's not even in this room at the moment, but I do have a, you know, the, the, the big torch. You see them everywhere. It's just, it's like a, a can, you know, that holds the butane. You click the back and a torch comes out the front. I even glued the fire safety down so I don't have to like click the fire safety. Just put some glue in there and it'll stay in place. Of course, you don't do that if you think that children are gonna be anywhere near it. Um, it's a dangerous thing to do. But it is not easy to click that thing by accident either. So I'm not worried about it for me. And, you know, I do have a son who comes in and plays around in the studio, but I keep those kinds of tools completely out of his reach when he's here. So that's why I'm just not really worried for, for me. Um, of course, shop, shop safety is something that you have to be very careful about. I have a, a whole workbench that's nothing but power tools, drills and saws and things like that, grinder. Um, that whole that whole bench is powered completely. This is upside down. It's completely powered um, from one power strip, and the power strip is up on top, so you can't even really reach it. Um, and it's always turned off. So when I need it, you know, when I go over there to use it, I turn it on, and then when I'm done in my workshop, it always goes off. So. That's one good way to keep things safe is to make sure that your power tools are, you know, deactivated, turned off, 
maybe all tied to the same power source so that you can easily go and just you know switch them all off with one click make it easy on yourself because if it's difficult you'll never do it <laughs> it's just human nature okay so I've placed foam core shells around the ones that come apart these don't come apart um, and they're not going to really distort or anything so I'm not worried about these um, I'm gonna move extraneous things out of the way and get my gloves on because this stuff is messy very messy when I'm doing you know a few days of this stuff in a row sometimes I'll just put my gloves aside and reuse them especially these really nice these are you know I, I actually started with crappy gloves and it turned out to be not a great idea these are heavy duty seven millimeter thickness nitrile disposable gloves I noticed that the seven millimeter the nice thick seven millimeter they don't they don't rip I don't have problems with these I have these really cheese ball El Cheapo uh, vinyl gloves or no they weren't vinyl. were they vinyl I don't know what they were anyway they weren't great they're not they're not uh, latex but they're not nitrile either I don't think I think they're vinyl anyway they're terrible and they 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 tear a lot I'm just using one because I really sometimes I only use one glove but occasionally I get some on my other hand and I don't want to mess with that so I'm gonna go ahead and use two and now I'm going to use my pour technique this is a technique that I I use to get my pours using only one cup um, I had these sticks with various different measurements on them and I'm gonna use this one because I'm gonna go with the smallest measurement so what it is is you, you can actually create one of these um, one thing I like to do when I'm experimenting around is I'll just take a cup and fill it with water and that way I can kind of use it to experiment around and I'll put about you know half of what I think I need I'll stick the stick in and I'll mark that that level and then I'll pour this in another cup or you get another cup or whatever doesn't matter um, stick it in and pour it up to that same level again so I've got two cups that are identical right pour one into the other one stick it in mark it again now I have the mark for twice as much liquid so I have two marks one is half and the other one is double that okay takes you know a few seconds to do it I mean this is like not something that you do all day it's stick it in mark it you know pour another one pour them together stick it in mark it you got a stick you can use that stick over and over and over they say you should always use clean sticks that's a very good idea I, I don't worry about it too much <laughs> uh, what I do though is I clean this off as soon as I've used it and put it aside so it's not like just completely crusted over with plastic um, I probably could get even, you know, more awesome with this. Like I could use some kind of polypropylene, maybe uh, dipstick that didn't, that the plastic didn't stick to. So I, when it was done, I could just pop it off and reuse the stick over and over. That'd be awesome. I don't actually, yeah, I'm not there yet. Um, all right, now we gotta, we gotta shake the plastic. too bad because I just used it a few hours ago basically okay now how does this work you stick the stick in probably fairly obvious but 
whatever. Um, we're gonna stick the stick in here. We're gonna pour in plastic, the yellow part. A or B. Um, up into the first mark. There we go. Cover it because moisture and smooth cast are not friends. I'll take this. I'll take the blue part. We're going to get the same thing. Got the stick in there. And I'm going to pour until we come up to the second line. Boom, done. Take the stick, stir it, stir it really well. You don't want to stir it for too long because this stuff goes off fast. Also, don't stir it too hard because it will come right out of the cup and go straight in your eyeball, which is awesome. Uh, I recommend wearing goggles, safety glasses, something. Uh, but if you're not doing that, then just be really, really careful at least. Okay. What we're going to do here is slash this on the sides, pour a little out, slosh around. Make sure that it has full coverage on the sides. And then I'm going to set it upside down here. Let it drain. And I'm going to slosh it around here. Do the same thing. Make sure that it has coverage on all the sides. Drain it out and rest it over this cup. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Make sure that it has coverage on all sides. And drain it out. going. It's a little, still a little more liquidy than I thought it was. It is really liquidy. All right. Set it there. Slosh this around. See how liquidy this still is. Oh, still pretty liquidy. Okay. So this is called a rotocast. I'm going to turn this around in circles, and then I'm going to go ahead and just sit it upside down here. Well, that doesn't work very well because there's plastic kind of stopping it. Really, this should be slid down. That's okay. This is just one layer, so it doesn't have to be great. It just has to be one layer. It is nice if you can get some decent uniform coverage though. Okay. Now the really fun part. We need to wait. Let's 
good to actually pop it off of there so that it doesn't uh, stick permanently, semi-permanently. Okay, got pretty good coverage there. Now, as you can see, that was a really small amount that I poured. So this is going to be like a, you know, multi-layer system. We're going to do this over and over until we get, well, I usually do two or three uh, layers. Sometimes two is plenty, actually. Um, they're pretty good now, actually. Um, do now is grab another cup again great value these cups are available at Dollar Tree for a dollar so I mean that's just like you know actually what is this 200 no it's 80 okay well it's not quite a penny each but it's pretty close <laughs> it's less than two pennies each Let's do this one more time. Okay, so got the stick in. I'm gonna do it on the, the counter this time, but you've seen how it works. Fill it up to the first mark. Cover that bad boy. I'm running pretty low, so I'm gonna get to start messing with the white stuff soon. Fill it up into the second mark, up to the second mark. There we go. Stir, stir, stir. Thoroughly stir. Make sure this is completely 100% mixed. And leave no chance of poorly mixed material. Wipe that thing off really good. Now, come back here. Doing another layer on the crate. Now this is not even quite enough to fill the crate. And yet, I'm going to get a crate out of it and a barrel and a whole bunch of other things. And that's pretty cool. Okay, slash that around. Pour that in here. Roto, roto, roto. Make sure that it gets all the way around. Rest it on the cup. Slash that around. Rotate this. Whoop, a little spillage there. This one doesn't really have a very, very good mouth to pour from. So some of that got lost, but that's okay. Put that there. That's gonna make sure that lots of it goes down to the base. This has a much smoother place to pour from, so I get a nice smooth pour from that. And then this guy. Again, we're gonna get a smooth, even coverage here going. And then I'll probably just keep rotocasting this until it's done. Actually, this is so thick, I might as well pour some excess here. At some point, it'll just like set up while it's pouring. So I gotta be careful about that. Now, you can see 
The significance of papering the table. Papering the table is a big deal. <laughs> this is not something you want to forget to do. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Let's look at our box again. Box is looking really good. Nice and solid. So you can really see in there and see that uh, the box has gotten some decent coverage inside there. So when that dries or sets, um, cures, I'm going to have a nice very thin box and looking looking the same for this uh, for this oil drum these got so thick that I didn't really need to, to turn them upside down and they still have plenty of thickness there at the top that is a, a, a very thick layer of, of plastic there right at the top so that's good and then this guy See how this is going. This looks pretty thin down at the bottom. I would probably benefit from a little bit extra there. At the bottom. This one always ends up being a bit thin at the bottom because it's difficult to, to get it down there and it's hard to ro rotocast it because it has such a uh, sloppy opening that causes the plastic to kind of go everywhere whereas these pour a lot more sort of securely I'll probably mm, I suppose I could do one more layer of all of these but first they're gonna have to set up so that was a pretty good demonstration of how these work what I'm doing here with the casting and molding and how all of these little parts eventually become all of these sort of ship detailed pieces and these ship detail pieces eventually uh, become things that are filmed or photographed inside the spaceship. Um, a lot of the photography has been done for the spaceship that I'm working this this particular ship interior that I'm working on right now, uh, but not all of it. Um, there's still quite a bit to go, and a lot of these little rooms have so many little details. So I'm going to actually show you, give you a peek inside the ship. So there's. There's uh, this particular room that I'm working on right now. I'm gonna take this off the stand so I can really be mobile with it. Okay, so this is the this is the the room that uh, that I'm working on right now. Um, it's kind of a, a deep freeze, and you can see that there will be various objects in here. Uh, this room will have a lot of barrels, will have shelving, will not have bedding, it will get very, very cold very fast, obviously, but there will be, you know, stacked up barrels, there will be crates, and it will sort of look like a, you know, deep freeze chamber, you know, where things are, are kept and frozen, maybe temperature sensitive, cargo, that sort of thing. And there's actually over here an interesting detail. You can see uh, a, little, a little door that you would slide up, has a little handle on it. And that door um, is, is <laughs> it's a little interesting detail in the ship. It's left over from when 
uh, the kitchen was back there, and this was a mess hall. And this entire room was at some point converted to a cooler. It was converted to a, uh, uh, like a, a, a deep freeze storage unit. And so a lot, it was kind of retrofitted for that. So eh, some interesting little details about the environment there. Um, but you'll, you're gonna see when it's all photographed, that back wall will extend all the way to that side. So, um, and then the, the ceiling will extend. So there'll, there'll be some extra details here. You're only seeing part of it. But uh, that's what I'm currently working on. And when it is, uh, when I get enough of these pieces cast and I'm kind of done with that part, uh, I'll, I'll move on to painting. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to start painting these things today, later today. I might go ahead and stream that as well. Uh, it'll be a fun opportunity to break in my new airbrush. Uh, actually, this is the old one. Where's the new one? <laughs> it's gone already. Here it is. So <clears throat> this is uh, an internal mix airbrush that I've had for a long time. And it's nice, you know, for detail. I have a high detail work. But it's uh, kind of a pain to use uh, for, the, for the stuff I'm doing right now. This is an external mix airbrush. So it means that it, it, it uh, uh, sucks the paint from here uh, up through here and the air blows out here. And so they get mixed right here at the tip on the outside. And what that means is that there's very little cleanup work and it's very fast to switch colors and it's all just very, very uh, rapid, much more rapid type of, of work brush. And I had a, a little plastic toy version <laughs> that I was using, and I ended up using this more than anything because it was just much less of a hassle to use. Um, so now I have this, and this has the advantage of also having a lot of different tips. Um, my good friend Cassie Benter, who helps run uh, Adventure Jam, who started Adventure Jam with me, uh, got me uh, the, the smallest size tip that they have for this. So it'll be interesting to see what I can do in, uh, in by the way of um, high detail work with this as well. So that's that's my new brush. Looking forward to, to, to breaking it in. I haven't even used it yet. Um, it was, uh, of course, about half the price, uh, half the store price uh, by ordering it on Amazon, as is usual these days. So it was actually quite cheap. Um, pretty excited. So I will probably, uh, actually, yeah. So I will probably get started um, with the painting later today and stream that. And in the meantime, uh, thanks for checking out this video. And uh, if this keeps going pretty smoothly, I may stream here as well as Twitch or instead of Twitch. Uh, because it might be less of a hassle for backers to be able to find me here and hang out and chat and find the videos later. Okay, thanks for watching.